Well met, fellow star travelers. Welcome back to Moonshadow Fantasy. I am your host, Makarios Moonshadow, a.k.a. Maka. Here is my guide to the Storm's Crown Extreme for all you fellow mount farmers out there. You know how we do, no fluff and stuff. Please share this with your friends, family, and grandma. No asking you for money, but I did make you a cool illustration, so please take a screenshot of this bad boy right here. These four moves right here have to do with the same phase, which you will see more than once. If her sword is aimed down, it is a donut, stay in the middle. If she is floating in the air, it is also a donut, stay in the middle. If she's leaning down with her hair facing her sword, run to the sword because she's going to dash to it as well. And if her sword is up, it is a line AoE, move to the back. And we begin. Start by separating your party into two stack teams with a tank and a healer on each one. DPS is on your cardinals, melee is on the south side. And all we're going to be doing at the beginning of this phase is monitoring the red arrow that comes up and moving away from it. And we're either going to be stacking in the middle for the donut, stacking in our stack teams, or spreading into our individual clock positions. Here's how this works. So the red arrow comes up, we move away from it, and because her sword is pointed up, it means line AoE, so as long as we're outside of that <coughs> and away from the red arrow, we're good. Next, she's gonna do. A, she's gonna start floating in the air, which means donut. We're all gonna get a uh, AOE under us. So immediately after the donut hit, everyone spreads to their individual clock positions. And like the illustration I showed you in the beginning, she's just gonna do one of each of these in different combinations. So monitor the red. We move away from the red. Um, she had her sword pointing down, so she does a donut. As long as we're on the inside and away from that red arrow, we're good. Then she's going to lean forward, which means she's going to dash towards her sword, which means so do we. We go towards the sword. We have stack markers. We stay stacked and we deal with the soak. Sometimes we have to spread after that. just depends on what we get. Party finder rules are if we have to spread out, if it is spread, only the tanks move forward and not that spot, leaving three people on each side of that sword. Arrow three is your tank buster. Mitigate it. You can tank swap here if you want to. Otherwise, you can just shirk the off tank and re-provoke it if you're a main tank. A lot of people do that because there's not a lot of tank swapping here. Next is teasing tangles. This one's a big one. The party finder rule is red is even and blues is odd. So the red go to your even numbers on whatever side you're on. The blue AOEs are going to go to the odd number. There's only two, three, or one. And then the person who doesn't have an AoE under them, you're going to go with the odd as well and stay because those blue AoEs are a two-person stack. So if you have a blue AoE or nothing, you're going to go to the one or the three. If you have a red AoE under you, you're going to go to the two or the four, whichever side it's it. And then just monitor the person, uh, if you have a red AoE, to your immediate left. Make sure they have room because it's very little space to work with there. Everyone in this party is item level 610. I recommend your party be that, because if you're going in here at 600, uh, any deaths and not the DPS check, and it's a fail. Plus, at 610, you skip a lot of phases. So that's what I recommend. Next up is going to be phase two. Um, you'll notice that there was some green underneath her. Just don't stand in the green. And now begins phase two. Immediately at the start of phase two, everyone goes to their clock positions. Tanks and healers are going to get a, a line attack at them, and the boss is going to dash to those people. As soon as she dashes to you with that line and hits you, just move out the way. Left or right doesn't matter because then an AoE is going to come under you. Immediately afterwards, everyone stack in the middle. Move your camera and face your clock position. Stay in the middle and wait for the big AoEs to pop, then run towards your individual clock positions. Stay on the outside. And the party finder rule is only the DPS move clockwise one position to stay in these little blue two-person stack markers once again. Now she's going to mark the DPSs with a little tether, hit each DPS, and after she hits you, again, just move to the left or right. Once she starts pounding the ground, melees, if you got it, pop faint. That'll reduce her physical damage. And everybody's going to stack at the A marker, big heels right here, and we're all going to move as one unit, become one person, go nice and slow, and we're just going to bait these AoEs in a clockwise position. Once that's over, both tanks will get a flare. Tanks move to the one and the two, while everyone else stacks at the C, or in front of the C, rather, because it's a knockback from the middle. So we're going to stack at the C, everyone else. 
Here comes some more tethers, followed by the line AoE. Again, she hits you with the tether. When she dashes at you, just move to the left or the right. And then comes Teasing Tangles, kind of the part two. The party finder rule of thumb here is that DPSs move to the right, tanks and healers move to the left. There'll be two people in each one of these big green circles. And all you're doing here is dodging AoEs. The first big AoE is gonna happen in the front, so stay towards the back. Then immediately go to left and right and double, terse, double person again, blue AoE. She loves those blue AoE two man stack teams, but stand on the edge of your circle and you're good. Just don't go outside the circle or very, very bad things will happen. Big, big healer checks when she starts pounding the ground. Just throw down everything you got. Next is gonna be some uh, DPS uptime, followed by phase three. So, at the start of phase three, this is what we call the PlayStation colors in Party Finder. Everyone's gonna get a color shape above their head. Just match the colors and go to the inner cardinal spot, with green arrow being the yellow. As long as you're in your inner cardinal spot, you'll be separated into little partners with the green circle around you. And as soon as those first AoEs go off, move ever so gently away from each other, just a little bit, to bait the second set. So the first AoEs are always going to be A, B, C, D, the cardinal positions. Immediately after that, we're going to do the same thing as phase one. Just monitor the red arrow and monitor what the boss's animation is doing. She's leaning towards the sword, so everyone's going to move towards the sword. Stay in your stack teams. DPS uptime here. And it's the same thing as phase one. Arrow four. It's always going to be a big raid wide, followed by arrow three, which is your tank swap. Again, you can tank swap here if you need to. Communication's key. Uh, I recommend just doing it or, again, shirking the off tank, re-provoking. Again, this is just PlayStation numbers, so move to your inner cardinal, just match the colors. So if you have a purple, go to purple. Now this one's, we're gonna have a slow-mo for this one because it's a little bit weird. You have to go to your match the colored markers, but you also have to deal with the double soak. So all you're doing here is you're, you're moving together two people per blue circle. One, one green circle is not gonna have these blue markers, so you're just combining the, everything, and as long as there's only two people in each blue circle, you did it right. There's uh, illustrations out there for how they should be exactly done, but <laughs> having done this a bunch of times, you notice that people just kind of cheese it and just bring them together and adjust. There's enough time for it. So again, we got a donut followed by immediately followed by a spread. Again, you're just watching the arrow to see where you're going and watching the boss's animations to see if you are uh, staying on the inside of her donut or not. As soon as you get that LB3, melee is pop it. And then begins phase uh, four. I lost count. But here is some DPS uptime. Whenever she's swirling in the middle, again, stay out of the green in the middle there. It's easy for melees to get snagged by that. Just uh, don't touch it. It's bad. Next up's going to be some more tethers, followed by the line AoE. So as soon as you get hit by your tether, she dashes towards you. Just move out the way. Here comes some more uh, fist slamming. Again, melees pop your feint. Everyone's going to stack at the A marker. And then this one's a little bit tricky. We're going to move in a clockwise position. Again, just baiting the AoEs. Stay nice and tight as much as possible and move as soon as those AoEs show up. Then everyone is going to move to the very middle and almost instantly move to your individual clock positions. At that same time, you're going to see those line AoEs with the tether again. It could be DPSs, it could be tanks. It's different every time, so just be ready for that. So here it is in slow-mo again. We're just going to move away from the AoEs, clockwise position, move directly into the center, immediately go to your clock positions and watch if you have a tether or not. If you do, wait for her to dash to you, then move out the way. This all happens almost simultaneously. Takes some getting used to, but that's the gist. 
after that, it's just going to be dodge AoEs. Whole lot of AoEs, whole lot of dodging. So for this one, uh, we're all going to move to the center. Pop your knockback prevention because there's not enough room for all eight of us. So someone's going to have to stay back a little bit. And if that's you, pop your knockback prevention. Because it's a, it's a knockback followed by that AoE blast. And then next up is going to be some more dodging of the AoEs. There's a whole lot here, but there's a, an easy trick to it. And that, and that trick is to just, it's the, it's the inside first, followed by the outside. And then when you're on the outside, you're going left or right. You'll notice a double tank soak at the top there. Uh, just invulm those. You don't have to stack together tanks. So here's the, the AoE chaos. All it is is out over and over. So here it is in slow motion because this gets people a lot, but it's always the same big AoEs. So you move out first, then you're going to move over. Could be left or right, doesn't matter, just dodge, and then in. It's just out, over, in. And you just dodge all those AoEs. Immediately afterwards, it's going to be your two tank flare, followed by everyone else at sea with, this, with the soak this time. There isn't a knockback, so it's okay to just stay at the sea. The and then you're done. And that is the fight. If you are at least, if everyone is at least 6, 10, and there's no dying, maybe one or two deaths is okay. But you will skip all the rest of the phases in this fight, which is like three or four more. But again, anything else that you see past this point, it's just a repeat of the same mechanics. Thank you everybody very much for watching. From the bottom of my heart, my name is Makarios Moonshadow, aka Maka. Please subscribe, help our channel grow. Join our Discord if you like doing savage runs. We are building raid teams. And thanks again for watching. Maka is out.